Law Warrior Online. The Howler. Overview. A mainstay of second-line clan forces since the late 29th century, the Howler is an agile, hard-to-hit reconnaissance mech that surprised many unwary mech warriors with its unexpected flexibility and long-range weaponry. Although this simian-looking chassis was designed as a clan fire mandrel totem mech in 2871, the Jade Falcon's seizure of the factory on Marshall and the clan homeworlds four years later saw the Howler heavily integrated into the Falcon's second-line forces, and the mech itself became a tangible symbol of the clan's long-time dominance over the facility. The factory's proximity to the Steel Viper and Snow Raven enclaves on Marshall, and the mech's reputation as a solid recon platform saw the Vipers and Ravens heavily adopt the Howler as well. The mech's traditional place in the Jade Falcon Talman ultimately saw the Howler's production relocated to the Falcon Occupation Zone. Capabilities Although mistakenly viewed as an ungainly mech, the Howler is a surprisingly agile machine, and its squat shape is difficult to hit at long ranges, which aids in scouting missions. Its hyper-extendable torso gives it a great range of tactical movement, and a built-in searchlight makes it perfect for hunting guerrilla and bandit forces in night combat. The Howler Factory's adjacency to the Jade Falcon School of Conflict, coupled with its ease of use and single weapon loadout, means the mech has proven itself an excellent field training platform for mech warrior SIBCOs, in addition to its traditional recon role. Battle History The Jade Falcons remain the most prominent Howler user in the Inner Sphere, but the Raven Alliance also makes extensive use of them for garrison duty. The most recent example occurred when a 1st Amphigean Light Assault Group company conducted an intelligence gathering raid on the Alliance system of Pondicherry in early 3150, investigating rumours of the Snow Ravens amassing forces for an assault on New Samarkand. The first prepared to encounter a sizable force on planet, but were instead met by a small garrison consisting of a binary of second line Raven mechs, reinforced by a protomech trinary and a star of aerospace fighter support. The company attempted to withdraw cleanly without joining battle, for they believed the rumoured Raven strike force was likely in a different system. However, the Star of Howlers surrounded and cut off the first's medium lance, then pummeled them with missile fire until their protomech companions arrived to finish the job. When the heavier Star of Raven mechs arrived, there was no one left to fight, and the rest of the first retreated to their dropship. Though Howlers are often seen as defensive scouts or mediocre harassers, a pirate raid in April 3147 demonstrated their rare use in a purely offensive role. A band of pirates, theorised to be bankrolled by the Lyran Intelligence Claw, landed on Blackjack and attacked the Jade Falcon School of Conflict. With the resident Falconers in support, the school's Sibco students piloted their trainer mechs against the assault and outmaneuvered the pirates with a veritable swarm of jump jet capable howlers along with a star of standard models. The entire Sibco that defended the school had recently undergone intensive training on jump jet manoeuvres, so rather than maintaining range to ensure their safety and effectiveness of each mech's single missile rack, the Howler pilots employed their speed and jump jets to close with the invaders. They then assaulted the pirates with point-blank missile salvos and physical attacks, even performing their recently practiced death-from-above manoeuvres en masse. Few of the jump-capable Howlers would survive the battle in operational condition, largely due to leg damage and pilot error. However, it remains a frighteningly effective display of Malvina Hazen's Mongol doctrine tactics being instilled in and executed by Falcon Warriors of mere Sibco age. Variants The most common classic Howler variant replaces two LRM-5 racks with jump jets. The odd arrangement lacks effective firepower, but this is intentional. It has historically been used for effectively training Sibcos on jump jet maneuvers. The Howler 5 is a more effective fight in the most models, replacing all LRMs with six extended-range medium lasers. The Howler 6 employs a paired SRM-6 launcher with Case 2 in a shoulder-mounted turret. Coupled with a hyper-flexible torso on a standard Howler model, the Howler 6 can attack close-range targets approaching any direction. Notable mechs and mech warriors. Star Colonel Derek Halm Klees. Star Colonel Cleese presents a disturbing visage to Sibco trainees at the Jade Falcon School of Conflict on Blackjack, with his odd mixture of red, brown and blonde hair, patches of vitiligo, and white scars that tell of many battles. Derek Heim is a fervent opponent of the Mongol doctrine which saw him continually reassigned from one undesirable post to another. Despite him carrying the blood heritage of past Khan Samantha Cleese, 
His continuous reassignment landed him as the head falconer at the School of Conflict, where he does everything in his power to deprogram the Mongol doctrine out of his Sibcos. The 3147 pirate reign not only instilled a sense of pride in him from watching his Howler pilots successfully defend the planet, but it also refilled him with dread, since it's clear that the students still cling to the Mongol belief. So the Howler. Mass 20 tons, chassis type A endo steel, power plant firebox 140, cruiser 75, max speed 118, no jump capacity, armor compound H17 ferrofibrous, armament is 3 type 5 longbow LRM5 launchers, manufacturer is the CJF factory zone 5, primary factory on blackjack, communication system JNE integrated, and targeting and tracking is the Mark IV TTS. It walks 7, runs 11, has 10 double heat sinks for a sink capacity of 20, and it has 7 armor on the head, 8 on the CT with 2 on the rear, 7 on the right and left torso with 2 on the rear, 5 on the arms, and 6 on the legs with its 3 LRM launchers being on the right torso, which coincidentally is where all the ammo is. It has 72 shots of LRM5 ammo, which means it can stay in the fight for a hell of a long time. It's a mech that you definitely keep around about the mid field area once the brawl starts to make sure that you can get a reliable hit with your LRMs, keeping everything within short range, giving you the best chance to actually hit with all five launches. But it's also a mech that you don't want to present to enemies as a good target. This is the kind of mech that you probably keep in heavy wood so it can fire out of it just to get that nice plus one bonus uh, to any return fire, or keeping it as an indirect unit. Uh, allowing you to sit uh, behind a hill or that kind of thing, even with the plus one. As long as you're not moving, you're not going to take any penalties there. It can run 11, but it's not the fastest of a 20-tonner, that's for sure, as some 20-tonners can move exceedingly uh, further than that. But with a speed of 118, it's not bad, it's just not the kind of mech that you really want to risk running that far out. As said, at 20 tons, there's a good chance that it could take a hit and basically get... Uh, knocked out of the fight very quickly. An AC-10, for instance, will pen the CT straight off any of the side torsos, and frankly, the last thing you want to be hitting is the right torso on a baboon, because that's where all the armor is. Uh, sorry, all the ammo is. So if you get any kind of roll for an internal strike on the right torso, there's a pretty good chance the whole thing will just erupt, and there won't even be salvageable metal from the thing with how big the explosion will be. Uh, as said, the Howler is a specialized unit, which is... Quite good. I like the fact that there, was, there are machines like this. I did say in some previous ones that I like troopers and there should be more of them because I believe that there should be a set of mechs out there for every faction that have their frontline, you know, just trooper units that go into the fight and get stuck in. And then you should have your specialists like the Howler that the Jade Falcons and the uh, Snow Ravens and stuff use. And that's what I really like about it. And the redesign for it is really, really nice in this Ilkline recognition guide. It's a great update visually, and the bro's got a miniature of it, and it's really nice. It's really good sculpt. And um, it, everything's in nice proportion in the updated artwork. Sadly, the original art doesn't really do it any favor. It looks like a bizarre boom box with a pair of legs and arms attached and a tape deck thing on the right side. It's I, I still liked the original because I liked the concept of it, of this light clan mech that only ran with LRM5s. It was a mech that I would have loved, I would have given money day one if a pack for it had ever been announced for MWO, because it, it would have been fun as hell just running around in a clan light that just fired LRM5s. I would have loved it. It would have been really fun. Uh, and any kills you get in it is just, it's just pure cheese. Uh, they did a redesign as a Project Phoenix version, or at least, you know, one of these, like, you know, new redesign. And it looked fucking horrible. They, they, it's the second image that's in this video, and it, it's not good. It looks really bad. It just doesn't do the poor thing any favors, and it's got more missiles than it should have. And then you got the nice redesign, which will be the one that you're seeing now. Beautiful design. Nice bit of, um, you know kineticism there with the movement in the picture to make it look like it's sort of stomping along and it's turning to fire its missile launcher you can see that he's also that the artist has also made sure that it's got that flexibility in the launcher to angle up and down to give it uh, easier shots you can see the uh the searchlight on the left torso it looks really nice it's a bit chunky it looks like those fists could be used to punch another light mech or a vehicle or something like that yeah it's just really nicely proportioned it's great design as i said the miniature that's based on this design looks really really good but um, uh, is it a mech that I would give as a reward for players? I don't think players would count it as a reward, personally. It doesn't really have any clan tech on it or anything like that. It is uh, it is a true blue, um, you know, 
rear uh, second line battle mech. Um, I would certainly love to have one, and if I if I could ever draw up a character of the of the time that somehow had a baboon in the inner sphere, I would I would happily use it. So uh, until then, um, thanks for, thanks for listening, everybody. I hope you have a a good week, and uh, yeah, I'll, I'll catch you next time. And uh, yeah, baboon or the howler, is it now? Baboon. <laughs>